Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome to another Aaron's Aquarium video. Now today is going to be a big one because we are going to be doing a full update on this reef tank. Now you guys ask me all sorts of questions about this tank. This tank is only eight months old and it is SPS dominated already. We've got some LPS here and a mixture of fish. And a lot of you want to know how I've been able to achieve this in, in such a short period of time. So we're gonna be going through this tank. I'm gonna be telling you what lights I use, what wave makers I use. We're gonna be taking a look down in the engine room and we're gonna take a little peek as well in the Harry Potter cupboard because that is where all of the gear that runs this is hiding. Now, before we get into all that, I want to show you something that I am just so happy about. Check this out. All right, so I've got something cool to share with you. Um, now, if you remember from um, previous uh, updates on this aquarium, I was a little bit worried about my copper band butterfly. Now, copper band butterflies are renowned for being very finicky fish. You know, a large majority, a large majority of them don't actually survive aquarium life. And mine was worrying me because it wasn't eating any food. Um, I bought the fish um, from the Abyss Aquatics in Stockport and it was feeding perfectly fine. Um, I also have the food that they suggested to feed it. Um, but when it got to my tank, it just didn't eat. And I think it didn't eat is because it was a little bit stressed out because of the purple tank. The purple tang was bullying the copper band butterfly, so I think it was just a case of it just wanted to stay as far away from the purple tang as possible. Um, and that just basically meant that it never ate. It never had any food and it passed away. Now, I've tried again with the copper band butterfly that you can see in front of me, but what I've decided to do this time is also add another new addition. And that is this yellow tank. Now this big guy has become sort of like the boss of the tank. He was, he was literally the boss of the tank overnight. Um, he's taken over and he's well and truly put the purple tank in his place. And it seems like as well that he's also become a bit of a protector where if the purple tank decides he's going to try something with the copper band, the yellow tank gets right in the middle and gives the uh, purple tank a bit of a kick in to say, stay away, you know what I mean? Now the copper band's a little bit jumpy still when the purple tank comes by, but he's, uh, he's definitely settled in. And this is the thing that I'm really excited to show you. Check this out. Now I hope to God he doesn't decide, oh, I'm not performing for the camera, but watch this. Let's move the camera back so we can definitely see everything. You ready? Look at this. They're all excited, food's going in, copper band is waiting. This is the best bit. The copper band's waiting with all of the other fish. Look at him. Food's going in. Nice big pieces of mysis. Look at him, look at him. He's on it. Boom. Straight in there, eating the mysis like an absolute champ. Not a care in the world, not scared of the purple tang, not scared of the triggers, just getting in the mix with everyone and eating like an absolute beast. Now I'm super, super chuffed about this. Now, my excitement doesn't end here though. You know, look at him. Oh, finally, a copper band that just looks Oh, and feeds, and just, oh, I'm just, I can't get my words out, it's just amazing. Look at him, boom, eats everything. Now, another thing that's really exciting me is the fact that he also eats Aptasia. That's right. So this sort of like colony of zoas that I've got in a tank here, these are actually out of the Fluval Evo over there, but they had Aptasia on them. So... Um, I decided to put them in here because I've noticed that he's been picking off a few of the Aptasia in my tank. Like, say, for example, those Blastos over there had some Aptasia in the middle of them and it was really receded because the Aptasia was stinging them. He has consumed the Aptasia 
And now look at the size of them. They're flipping huge. Look how big and fluffy they are. So they're happy, that easy in Aptasia. So I'll put this in and he cleared the Aptasia off. So because I've had good success so far with the copper band butterfly, I'm now going to chance it with a different fish. So one of the fish that I've always wanted to keep and I've failed four times so far is that fish there, the Achilles tang. This Achilles tang has been in Kraken Corals for um, a week or so now, has it been? Two, two or three weeks now, I think. Is it? Is that yeah, long yeah, it's been? Yeah, you've had Christmas and everything. Right. Yeah, Christmas runs over weeks, doesn't it, not days? <laughs> so, we're gonna, so we're gonna get these two to try and catch it. It's been in a coral bay as well, so it's not been in like a, like a more of a sterile fish system. So it's used to, oh, you caught it. Oh, it's caught it no, that quick. We don't mess about anything. Though. Massive anticlimax. <laughs> well far that was going to be flipping hours. <laughs> I'm going to let it go now into the tank again. Let it go, I can have some more fun. There he is. So this one's definitely a male as well because he started to get the tail tassels coming through. He's a nice size. He's bigger than I've ever had before. So I'm hoping because he's more mature. <laughs> I've got it on, <laughs> you're all blurry in the back. Because it's more mature, I'm hoping that it settles in better into the tank. So let's get this bad boy bagged up, get him home and see how he does. Oh, say hello. Hello. <laughs> And here he is. So it has actually been a few weeks since I filmed that section of the video. So this guy has been in the tank now for I think around about two weeks and he has settled in nicely. Now, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram yet, you need to because a lot of stuff happens over on Instagram that you don't get to see on YouTube. Do you know just where I just pull out my phone and just do some quick quick fire things and just show things. So I showed on Instagram um, this guy being acclimated to the tank, being introduced to the tank and all that good stuff. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. There's a link in the description. Now he's doing great. Uh, because he's the only acanthrus tank in the tank, he's doing okay. Um, he's sort of taken over the tank, become, I think he's become a bit of a joint boss because the yellow tank is still definitely the boss but they are still working out a hierarchy the purple tank is definitely now at the bottom of the pecking order which i actually like because he's been a bully for a long time but the i can't well, sorry the uh, the achilles sorry um and the yellow tank are definitely still working out the hierarchy which has caused a little bit of stress and the achilles has a little bit of white spot on him at the moment um He's got a nice size to him. He's got a nice build. I'm not worried that that's going to cause any issues. Now, one of the things that you guys have asked me is how do I keep my sand so white? So one of the main ways in which I keep my sand white is by having very high flow in the tank. You can just see now, see how the sand is sort of like brushing across the floor. So what this does is anything that even thinks about settling on this sand bed just gets ripped right up straight away. The sand does get moved, but normally because I have the water moving from left to the right, right to left, whatever moves to the left then gets pushes, pushed back to the right and I don't tend to need to adjust the sand quite often. Apart from in this corner. This corner tends to get a ball spot quite quickly, so I do have to move the sand back now and then. But I personally feel that is a small price to pay for this beautifully nice white sand. So when it comes to flow, I've got quite a decent little trio going on. So sort of like the big buy is here. This is my Maxpec Jaya. You guys know I've been using these things for years, absolutely love them. This is the XF350 Jaya. We've got two of these in the tank, one on this side and one on the other side. And this is what sort of like takes up the main bulk of the flow. And these are what sort of like keep my sand clean. The reason why they do that is because they create this sort of like sheet of flow that goes across the top of the tank, giving that really good surface agitation that you can see. And then it hits the acrylic or the glass at the other end, comes down and then comes back across the floor of the aquarium, giving it that sort of like that sweep. It's like sweeping up. It cleans right across 
the sand bed and then the other one will kick on on the other side and then do it the other way so that's how it sort of like keeps everything balanced now that type of flow is that type of flow but i needed something a little bit extra so i have this this is the rossmann mover this is actually the 11600 rossmann mover now this provides a completely different type of flow than this does so they complement each other very well it creates this wider more dispersed flow that can just go straight through the tank through the corals and just give that sort of like that different type of movement what the gyres can't really create and then up at the top i've got my return pipe so that is connected to a turbine duo uh, return pump which is by maxpec in the sump and then on the end of the outlet there, I've got a random flow generator. That thing is brilliant. It's just a piece of 3D printed plastic that is a game changer. You might have seen uh, the video that I made on that random flow generator. If you haven't, I'll put a link up in the corner for you to check it out. That basically just clips onto my return. And instead of having this jet flow, so like normally with a return, you have a straight line of flow that just goes whoosh straight through. Corals don't really like that. But what this will do is it makes the water sort of like spin randomly. So not just like a clockwise, constant clockwise motion or a constant anti-clockwise. It'll go that way, that way, that way, blah, 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 blah. It'll go all over the place. And it also widens the flow as well. It, it's, it disperses it and spread it, spreads it out wider, a bit like what this wave maker does. So the flow going through the tank is just diverse as hell. And the corals love it. And that beautiful white sand is what sort of like really gives this tank its look. That and the aquascape. Now I know loads of you guys ask me like, how did I build the scape? You know, it's amazing, you want one, etc., etc. And I didn't actually build this aquascape this time. I had this aquascape built for me by a company called Reef Tank Aquascapes. They're a UK based company, but they have just made it possible for Americans to buy their aquascapes as well. This aquascape was fully customized. It was like literally, I explained to um, Reef Tank Aquascapes how I wanted my scape to look and they created it. So this was all designed by me, built with them, and it is absolutely amazing and super functional. The whole point of this tank was to, number one, keep a lot of the rock off the floor so that you'd have good flow all around the tank, as well as provide plenty of spaces, but very minimal spaces for SPS corals. So when the SPS fully grow out, you won't even see the scape. That's the idea behind it. That's the plan. Coral wise in the tank, let me just uh, show you what I've got. So this is the left hand side of the tank and this is the clownfish's area and she's not scared of defending it trust me she will fight any of the fish in this tank and i mean any of them yellow tang purple tang achilles doesn't matter if you come into her area and you stay there too long you're getting your ass kicked <laughs> so this is more of an lps area so at the bottom down here and uh, we've got a, a symphilia um, down here We've got some um, little zoas here, which are utter chaos zoas, but that's a frag that's just come off the frag rack. That isn't a permanent fixture because I've actually got some utter chaos just on the back there. This section here, some of you guys may notice it, some of you may not, but this is in fact an Aaron's Aquarium clown cave. So this cave has actually been created again by me and built by Reef Tank Aquascapes. You can actually buy these things by, by the way. I'll put a link in the description. So I've covered this clown cave in Zoas. It has a little entrance there for the clowns to go in, um, especially when it comes to breeding time. They can go inside that cave and it's all smooth on the inside and they can lay their eggs. There's a little hole at the side of the cave where you can put a, a pipette or a pipette, however you pronounce it, in the hole and push food into the cave so that if there's any babies in there they're safe in there because the big fish can't get in and you can put some rotifers and stuff in there as well so that's cool and now it's getting covered in coral it's going to not stick out like a sore thumb but definitely be functional so we've got some rastazoas on there we've got some um, i think it's ss spitfires some mind tricks um, some purple hornets blueberry fields utter chaos and the one that I love the most, because it means I can say bad words. 
<laughs> on YouTube is that one at the back. That one is called, and I honestly, I did not make this name up. That is a blonde, blue-eyed bitch. These Zoa names are ridiculous, honestly. Absolutely ridiculous, but so funny. <laughs> on the area as well, we've got like, um, we've got a range of Sophastrias on there. So we've got um, at the front, this green one is a Mardi Gras Sophastria. Behind that, we've got the Bizarro Sophastria. Behind that, we've got the Jingle Bell Sophastria. And to the right of it, we've got the Sophastria Decadia, which is the branching type. So this will look cool as it starts to fill out. Um, just to the side there, we've got some Blastos, which you've saw um, previously. Down here, we've got my big red Lobo. And this one, believe it or not, it popped up on my Facebook um, memories recently. I've had this Lobo for four years now. This is one of the first corals I ever bought, and I still have it to this day. He's a beast. Behind the Sophastrias, we've got um, a little hammer coral. So I'm thinking about adding a few more euphilias to this section, like maybe just another one here, maybe another hammer, but a different color. And then just maybe about here, um, another one just to fill that area out. But I just need to make sure and see how that grows first, um, which way it grows so it doesn't sting anything or out like that. We've got some Monty plates at the back because every reef tank needs some Monty plates. <laughs> We've also got a sun coral, which is doing really, really well. About 12 o'clock midnight, this thing opens up like mad. It looks amazing. Uh, I've had this now for about two, two or three weeks. Seems to be doing great. Up at the top here, we've got plenty of different sticks growing. Around the back, we've got the frag rack and even more sticks all growing out really, really well. And that view that you get is just super cool. I love it. All the way around, we've got sticks everywhere. Sticks growing up. This one, again, was sort of like one of the first ones I bought. Um, it was bleach white when I bought it, and it's really started to color up now and basing out for fun. And it's starting to grow a few new tips now as well, which is super cool. So that's how the skate looks from this angle as well, which is awesome. You could just, that flow through there. So again, you get that good flow penetration in the tank with all of the wave makers. And that's that. So that is the tank itself. But what makes all of this tick? Let's go down to the engine room. All right, so here it is. This is what I like to call the engine room. My sump section, basically. Now, this sump isn't anything fancy, other than the fact that it looks fancy. This is a custom acrylic sump by Custom Reef Aquariums. This thing is solid. This is built like a tank, this thing. But it's not a fancy sump. There isn't loads of twists and turns and ups and downs and all of that lot. So you can put a reactor here and this and that and all up. No, it is just a simple three chamber sump. Keep it simple. Refugium, skimmer section, return section, job done. No messing about, no twists and turns and all that lot. Over here in the refugium section, it's quite, a, um, it's quite a, an efficient section this. Now, all of the water from my tank comes straight into this section and it goes straight into the algae that is inside this chamber. The algae that I'm using is Chato or Chato Martha, however you pronounce it. I've also got a couple of mangroves in here. Um, I've had these things for ages. I've just put them in here just so that I can keep them alive. But these things are cool when they all grow out They look like, and they look like trees. Now, this section works quite efficiently because I don't have any filter socks in this sump at all. No filter socks, no filter floss, no posh roller filter or anything like that. So it means that I have to maintain this sump very little. I'm not cleaning filter socks every other day, replacing them. I'm not taking filter floss out all the time and throwing it in the bin, which means that this some runs a little bit more environmentally friendly because I'm not throwing away filter floss constantly and going into the landfill. What happens is the water from the main display comes down into the sump section and goes into the chato. All of the crap, all of the waste gets caught up in the algae and all of my little beasties, antiopods, copepods, things like that, all eat the waste that is caught up in the chato. And also as well, because this chato does grow and it'll fill up this chamber, it'll suck up nitrates, it'll suck up phosphates, keeping my levels down. 
and then I'll throw a large majority of this Cheeto away or give it to a friend or whatever. Um, and then as I take that out, any crap or any waste that is caught inside the Cheeto, I'll be taking out as well. And all of those nitrates and phosphates that the Cheeto has sucked up, I'll be taking that out as well. So I'm, in, I'm exporting nutrients in two different ways, which is cool. The light that I'm using to power this refugium is a Zetlite E200 refugium light. This thing's a beast. I've used loads and loads of refugium lights in the past and I've never had one as good as this. And because it's so big, it covers a large surface area, so that means my Chato grows even faster because it's not a single spot pointing in an area and you're just getting it fanned out. It is a full plate of LEDs covering that full chamber. Love it. This section here is my skimmer slash reactor chamber. But at the moment, I'm not actually using the reactor because this is only used as and when I need it. So in this, I'll probably put maybe carbon to polish up the water. But as you've seen, the water looks very polished at the moment. Don't need to worry about that. The water is crystal, crystal clear, it's like gin clear. And I'm not using filter socks, I'm not using filter wool. I'm not even using carbon at this moment in time, but I've still got that clarity. Goes to show, doesn't it? So when I need it, I might put phosphate removing media in there or carbon in there. But at this moment in time, nitrates and phosphates are bob on. Um, water clarity is fine, don't need it, so it's disconnected. And then in here, we have got the Maxpect Air Aqua Duo skimmer. This is a dual inlet skimmer, so it can take water in from both sides. And the amount of skimmate that this thing produces is insane, which helps me keep my levels down as well. <laughs> I've also got a little damselfish in here, which is from a previous tank. Didn't really want to put him in the main display because he is very aggressive, but um, he'll be going in a new tank at some point. But He's living life out here in the moment. There's also a tail spot Blenny in this sump as well, which I see every now and then. He was in the main display, but he must have gone down the overflow at some point and he's ended up in here. But they've been in here for months, months. And they're doing well because I don't have filter socks. There's plenty of food in there for the fish as well. And then in the final chamber, I have some Maxpect bio blocks. I only have two because in the past I've put six in a different system and they work really, really well at reducing nitrates, sometimes a little bit too well if you've got too many of them. And that's a problem I found where I crashed my nitrates and I couldn't get them back up again because they had too many blocks. So now I've only got two Maxpec bio blocks in there. They definitely do work. I've used them for a long time and they definitely kick the ass out of nitrates. Behind that, I've got a little 1000 litre per hour maxi jet pump in here, which feeds my UV sterilizer. And behind that, I've got a Maxpec turbine dual return pump, which pumps the water back up to the main display. So just on the left hand side wall of the cabinet, I've got a D&D &D 24, oh no, 20 watt UV sterilizer, which is fed by that maxi jet. And below that is the controller for the Rossmont pumps. So the Rossmont pumps are actually AC pumps, but they're able to be controlled via that waiver thing there, which is really cool. And then just behind the tank, we've got the Harry Potter cupboard. And basically what this is, is a place for me to put all of my crap. So the tank looks all beautiful and all of the stuff that normally makes the tank look cluttered is in here. So up on the top shelf up here, I've got, I call my dosing products, you know, I've got my trace elements, strontium, some copepods, some phosphate remover, some coral food, some bacteria for the tank to help keep the tank clean some phosphate media, coral dips, you know, just all sorts of stuff just to keep the tank ticking over. I've even got like an auto feeder and stuff like that. And then down here, this is where the magic happens. So we've got my dosing containers there, my magnesium, my calcium, and my alkalinity. They all get dosed via the e-coral doser. I also have the e-coral light controller. So this monitors my pH and all sorts of stuff. I have the plug bars as well, so I can turn things on and off and yada yada yada. Full like controller and stuff. All my controllers for my MaxPec stuff is all on this board. This place is a scruffy mess at the moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna redo it and make it look all fancy this year when I get a chance. Down here we've got the reef bot. This is what helps me keep the tank looking as beautiful as it does. Um, this is an automatic water tester and it uses normal everyday test kits. So I've got Salifert in there, I've got API in there, 
and I've also got purple pond in there for phosphates. That's the water container that it needs to clean itself out with. That's the waste container and that is my auto top up container in there. I've also got another container there which I don't use but uh, I use the D&D temperature controller uh, as well to make sure that my temperature is always spot on and that is the Harry Potter cupboard really it's nothing fancy just gives me a chance to hide away all of this crap and make sure that the tank looks all beautiful so there we go that is the very first reef update for 2020 and we can use this video now as a bit of a look back when we get to December of this year, we can look back at this video and see how much corals have grown and things like that. Now, I know quite a few of you guys are actually subscribed to this channel for the Fluval Evo series, the super simple budget reef. Now, I'm going to be releasing the next video in that series next Sunday, so keep your eyes open for that. If you have loved today's video, make sure that you hit that like button. Um, if you want to keep up with videos from Aaron's Aquarium, make sure that you hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell so that you get notifications because if you are following me for the Flu Evo video, you'll get the notification when that comes out. But just a heads up, I always release my videos at 9 p.m. UK time on a Sunday. So there you go. Guys, thank you so much and I will see you all soon.